Michael Bisping came out uh, over the week. You guys listen to Michael Bisping's podcast, by the way. Believe you me. You guys should check that out. He's fun. He's got an opinion. He never misses, and he's he's usually got some pretty good guests on there. But my, Michael Bisping brought up a uh, a point, and he said, you know, and I, I'm not crazy about the way that I'm I'm seeing uh, Conor McGregor train. I'm paraphrasing here, but he said, you know, I'm not crazy about the way I'm seeing him train. Where are the where are the high level wrestlers? How come he doesn't have the high level wrestlers in there? So let's break this down because I have an opinion on that, and I actually don't know who Conor is training with. I haven't seen that. I know he's very loyal and he's out there with his coaches, and I know he's in Ireland. I know he's at the Straight Blast Gym. I know he's with his teammates. Did he then bring in some outside help to try to look like Khabib? I couldn't. I, I couldn't confirm or deny. I don't know, but I'm going to trust that Michael does know. He and Connor are, are a lot closer than Connor and I are, and they even have the same management. So I'm going to trust that Bisping knows. And I do recall. When Connor was having his troubles with Nate Diaz, he brought in Dylan Dennis, Dylan Dennis specifically, to give him that look. I haven't heard of anything like this or some wrestler that has gone out there. I just haven't heard of that. So let's assume that that's accurate information and that Connor did not bring in any wrestlers. There's two sides to that coin, and the first is the one that Michael Bisping is offering, which is if you're getting ready to take on a wrestler – who's got a couple of big takedowns, particularly and almost exclusively a single leg and or a body lock. You should be working on wrestlers on your single leg defense and your body lock defense. Okay, that's the first argument. And that would be the general school of thought. And I'm not forming my opinion on where I'm at with this. I'm just, But let me offer you guys the other side. One thing you do not want to do in training camp is get your ass kicked every day. And it does not matter if you're getting your ass kicked at your weakness that is likely to be exploited because of the skills of your upcoming opponent. It does not matter what the reason is. It is extremely important in training camp that you are not getting your ass kicked every day. There are times when I would take that statement back. I'm talking about training camp, which is generally an exclusive eight weeks prior to the fight. Some guys will go as many as 10, and some guys will go as short as six to six and a half weeks. The reason I point that out is take a guy like me, I go to practice every single day, twice a day, no matter what. But I will admit to you my effort is different. My output is different. I might talk to the guys a little bit more. Eh, I'm a little bit tired. I might sit this one out. Eh, You know what? I could use a drink of water. And then you narrow in on what is training camp, where the intensity goes up and the breaks go down and the sips of water in between rounds go away. But that is also a great time to learn and skill build. Those are the times it's really good to try something new, put yourself in uncomfortable positions. And whenever you're preparing for a competition, you've got to have three things with your workout partners. you got to have guys that can beat you, you got to have guys that can push you, and you got to have guys that you can whip. There are times when you will need a guy, particularly when you are trying to learn a new skill or a new technique, that you need to be able to hit that skill or technique on and have success. And then you'll have the guys that are going to offer you some defense there. Maybe sometimes you get it and sometimes you don't, and then you're going to have some other guys that are going to shut you down. But that is what you need. And maybe that's a bigger guy. Maybe it's a more experienced guy. Maybe you jump into a field that you don't really know. But you've got to have all three. When you're in a training camp, you don't want just one of those. And you definitely don't want it to be the guy that just whips you. You have to go home with a level of confidence each day. No matter how hard you worked or how hard you pushed, you have to go home with a level of confidence. I don't believe if you just brought a wrestler in that somebody's going to just take Connor down and hold him there. I think that Connor is a good enough of an athlete and certainly of a fighter to deal with that. I would just offer to you when you are bringing those guys in, it can it can give you a very false sense of security or a false sense of insecurity. And as the fight starts to loom and be right around the corner, you have to be very careful. You have to really be careful of what you let in your bubble. Sometimes things will happen and you'll deny them. 
to yourself. You don't let them in your bubble. I got held down down today. My effort sucked. Ah, block that out. Block it out. Got to be really careful. The mental side of it is very big, and I think whenever you're talking about somebody like Conor McGregor, who is very mentally tough, aside from every other skill he has, you know, the one thing that Conor never gets credit for, and I don't know, I don't know how, is the ice running through his veins. To watch that guy deal with pressure and then go out there and perform. And, you know, that's the big thing that you want as an athlete. That is what's going to be able allow you to be able to live with your career when it's over. And I can tell you when I look back at the regrets that I have in my own career, it was never about the outcome, ever. It was about the performance. Did I perform to the best of my abilities or did something get in the way? A fear and anxiety, a distraction in your mind, an an injury, a this, a that, a personal, whatever it was, did you bring your skills with you on fight night or not? This may surprise you guys to hear. Sometimes the answer is no, I did not, and you still won. Those are not the performances you look back on with a lot of pride. And there are other times when you will lose the competition but go home with tremendous pride because you performed. You brought your skills, and Connor is very consistent, and I think he deserves credit for that. A fine example was the night he fought Eddie Alvarez. First time at MSG, the largest gate in mixed martial arts history. I know that was the largest gate, guys, because I had the record until that night when I lost the record to Connor McGregor. So take it from me. He was the last one out. I realize that Eddie walked second. I don't want to hear it. But he was the last one out. He was the main event. He's closing the night, and the arena was there to see him. And he walked out there as calm and cool as can be. And he did the same thing with Floyd Mayweather, and there's something to be said for that. But when you're dealing with a guy like that that has those mental abilities, he knows where his weaknesses are. He knows what his kryptonite is. He knows at the end of the day... No matter what the media says and what his fans and friends and the neighbors say, he knows I'm just a human being. And if Connor did not bring in high-level wrestlers, it was for a reason, and I would offer to you that that reason was not physical, that it was mental, that somewhere he worked with some of those guys, he either felt he got what he needed And he can dot that I and cross that T, or he thought that's something I'm going to have to deal with later. I need good rounds right now. I'm not worried about the single leg. I'm going to be worried about teeping and keeping him away. I'm not worried about being held down. I'm going to be worried about putting a pace on him and pushing harder than he does for 25 minutes should we need that long. Whatever it is, and I'm making things up now, but I'll bet you I'm I'm either right or at least I've, I've got a hold of the... I've got a hold of the right thing, perhaps by the wrong end. But I think that that would be one of the reasons why you're not seeing some of those high-level wrestlers. That's just not something he's looking to deal with right now. And as far as the wrestling goes of Khabib, look, he's got a tremendous pace, but he attacks with either single legs or he attacks with body locks. It's not rocket science. Same thing goes for Khabib. Great of a striker as Connor is, he's going to hurt you with teeps to the body or he's going to hurt you with a straight left hand. It's not rocket science. It's an ass-whipping contest in a steel cage, and we can make as much of it as we want to. And I watch people do it for years upon years. But this is about as simplistic as society is going to allow you to get.